here! I'm Sabrina, and this is the Senior Classroom. If you're new here, that's great! We can meet here all summer long and go on some really fun adventures. But did you know, even when we're not here, we can make our own Senior Classroom? The world around us is a giant classroom waiting for us to explore it. And with a little bit of the Secret Classroom magic and our imagination, we can learn about anything we want, anywhere we are. You're probably wondering why I'm dressed like this. And I bet you want to know why there are black stripes under my eyes. I see athletes wear it all the time on TV. And that's because it helps keep the sun out of their eyes. The black stripes reflect the sun and it bounces right back into the sky. I just thought it would be fun to try it and I got to learn about how it works. Sports can teach us a lot. That's why today we're going to have a ball. So let's get going. Hey everybody, we're in Hodgetown. Have you ever been to a baseball game? I thought I might see if they'd let us in since we were talking about sports today. So you head on back to the secret classroom. I'll catch you later. Hey, I'm Kennedy. And if you like baseball, then you're gonna love this well-known song that is sung all over America at baseball games. So if you know this song, sing with me. Take me out to the ball game. <laughs> Take me out to the ball game take me out with the crowd buy me some peanuts and cracker jacks i don't care if i ever get back so let's root 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 for the home team if they don't win it's a shame for it's one two three strikes you're out at the old ball game thanks for singing with me bye Hi friends, welcome back to The Secret Classroom. I'm Mrs. Garcia, and I wanna share with you one of my favorite songs from when I was a little girl. The song is called, Take Me Out to the Ball Game. This is a song about someone who goes to a baseball game and they experience everything that happens at baseball games. It's really cool. And this song reminds me of whenever I used to go with my dad and we would sing this. So today we're gonna read it like it's a poem, okay? okay? All right, so I'm gonna start, and I want you to keep your eyes on the words and follow my pointer, okay? okay. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out with the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and Cracker Jack. I don't care if I never get back. Let me root, root, root for the home team. If they don't win, it's a shame. For it's one, two, three strikes, you're out at the old ball game. Have any of you ever heard that song before? No. Yes. Yes? They usually play it at baseball games. <gasps> yeah, I have. Now, when I was a little girl, I sang this song all the time, but I didn't know what all the words meant. Some of the words in this poem are a little bit tricky. So we're gonna go back and look at some of the tricky words and see if we can figure out what they mean. All right, can you help me? Yeah. Yeah? yeah? All right, the first word. Yes, Phoebe. The ball game. Ball game? Oh, I'll tell you what a ball game is. A ball game is a sports game like baseball, football, basketball, any kind of sport game, all right? But the first tricky word I was thinking of is this one. Say Cracker Jack. Cracker Jack. Raise your hand if you know what a Cracker Jack is. Zaylee, what's Cracker Jack? Crackers? Oh, that's a good clue. Like, it has cracker in it, so it could mean crackers. Does anybody else have a guess? Armando? I think it's kind of like um, cereal. 
Cereal? Apple Jacks. Oh, Apple Jacks has the word Jack in it. Those are good guesses. Well, if, if you go back into the poem, maybe you can find a clue. Buy me some peanuts and Cracker Jack. So if peanuts is a food, Cracker Jack is probably a food, right? Yeah. And guess what? I brought some Cracker Jacks so I can show you. Those are popcorn. Yes, Cracker Jacks look like this and they sell them at baseball games. So if you want a snack at a baseball game, you can order some Cracker Jack and it has popcorn and peanuts and then it's mm. drizzled in caramel. Isn't that yeah. yummy? Yeah. Maybe I'll give you some later. Okay. Sound good? Yeah. All right, so we figured out what Cracker Jack means. Now let's go back. Oh, this word right here really, really tricked me. It says, let me root, root, root for the home I know what that team. Means. All right, let's give Kemper a try. What does root mean, Kemper? Cheer? How did you know? I just figured it out. It says, let me root, root, root for the home team. So when you root for the home team, it's like cheering for the home I, team. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna try it out. I saw you. You I tell me if I'm doing a good job rooting, okay? okay. Ready? Is that good? Yeah. Okay, now you try. When I count to three, I want to hear your best root, okay? One, two, three. Woo! Yay! 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 All right, good job, friends. You are good at rooting. I bet your team will win if you root like that. Okay, the last word that always tricked me, I didn't know what it meant when I was little, was this one. Strikes. For it's one, two, Three strikes, you're out. Vivi, what do you think strikes means? That means you're out. It does mean you're out. It says that right here. But Zaylee, what is a strike? You strike them on the board. So you have like numbers. You like have one chance, two chance, three chance. You do have three chances. You know, whenever I used to play softball when I was a little girl, I play you played it too? Mm -hmm. I would swing the bat like this. And if I miss the ball, the umpire would yell, strike. So that's what a strike is, if you miss the ball. Strike. So I'm gonna pitch you a pretend ball and I want you to get your bats up like this. And whenever I throw it to you, I want you to swing and miss, okay? Yeah. Ready? Strike. strike. So it says four, it's one, two, three strikes, you're out. So how many strikes do you get? Three. three. I got three shucks in softball. You did? All right, well, isn't that a cool song? Yeah. yeah. And we learned some tricky words. The first one was Cracker Jack. Cracker Jacks. And Roots. Roots. Can you root again? And the last one was Strikes. Strike. And that means when you swing and you miss the... Ball. Strike. The ball. Strike. Friends, Strike. next time you go to a baseball game, you're gonna know what these words mean. Yeah. And you might even hear this song. This song is gonna have a beat and you'll be able to sing it because you learned it here in the secret classroom. All right, now we're gonna sing, take me out to the ball game, all right? Okay. So I'm gonna point to the words and you follow along with me and see if you can sing it. Ready? Okay. Take me out to the ball game, take me out with the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and cracker jacks. I don't care if I never get back. Let me root, root, root for the home team. If they don't win, it's a shame. Help me. For it's one, two. Three strikes, you're out at the old ball game. Yay, good job. You guys are awesome. Good job helping me figure out those tricky words. Well, this is Mrs. Garcia, and I'll see you next time. Bye. You know what kind of ball doesn't bounce? A snowball. Have you ever been to a ballpark? The ballpark is so big. It is where you can watch a baseball game. I've always wanted to learn how to hit a baseball. It looks kind of hard, but maybe if you do it in a sequence.
sequence is a fancy word for doing things in a certain order. Let's go find out. Are you ready to play ball? Hey, thanks, Sabrina. I saw a ruckus and he let me down on the field. Can you believe it? And the lights are even on. You're right. Hitting a baseball from a tee is a set of steps that form a sequence. So let's go through those steps. The first thing is I need a tee. So I'm gonna set it here, right here on home base. I think that's good. It needs to be solid and firm. I've got a bat, but I gotta have a baseball. There we go, I've got one. I'm gonna set my baseball right on the tee. That looks good. Okay, got my ball, I've got my tee. Now I'm gonna grab my bat. You think this is too close? I think I'm too close. Hmm, I think maybe I'm good. Oh no, I'm too far. Let's get a little closer. What you want is the middle of the bat to hit the baseball. I think we're good. So we're gonna get a firm foundation, be able to squash some bugs with our feet so we can move, knees bent, that's pretty good. I've got my bat, line up my knuckles, not too tight, but not too soft. We gotta have a firm foundation here. Okay, so I'm gonna squish a bug and reach back. And remember, I want that ball to go right in that bat. I think we're good right there. Let's give it a try. I'm gonna try to hit the scoreboard. I'm gonna get a home run. Here we go, my tee my baseball, my legs are firm, I can squash a bug, my knuckles are in line, I'm gonna pull back. So as you can see, it takes a set of steps to form a sequence to hit a baseball from a tee. What else causes it has steps to form a sequence? Maybe tying your shoe? Or what about getting in a car? So the next time you get in a car, Think about the steps that formed a sequence of getting in the car. Well, I didn't hit a home run, so I think I'm gonna go get my baseball and continue to practice. Woo! Touchdown! Let's go! Oh, hey friends, it's Mr. Miller again. Thanks for coming by my classroom. I'm so excited you can make it. Today, we're gonna do a fun science experiment. I think you'll really like it. We're going to determine which ball will bounce the highest? In science, you have to make predictions, and then you have to test those predictions in order to see whether or not you are correct. I have a basketball, a football, a volleyball, a small ball, and a golf ball. Well, I made a few predictions, but I also had to take into consideration the concrete floor, which is covered by the carpet. So that may affect some of my predictions. I'm curious to see which of these predictions actually will turn out to be correct. In the first spot, I believe that the small ball will actually be the one to bounce the highest. That's going to be this ball right here. Then I believe the football is going to come in second place. I believe because of the size of the ball and the relative ease with which I was able to throw and catch it just now, it's going to have that same effect on the floor followed by the basketball. I obviously believe the basketball has the ability to bounce, but I don't think it's gonna bounce that high, or will it? Hmm, not completely sure. That's why we're gonna predict this. My fourth highest ball, I believe will be the volleyball. I don't think it's gonna bounce that high. Not when the floor is covered with carpet. And then I believe the golf ball which unless you hit it with a golf club, I don't believe it's actually gonna bounce very high. Well, let's just test out my predictions. Let's start with the first ball here, the basketball. You see, I'm wearing the shirt that represents one of my favorite all-time players, Kobe Bryant five-time champion for the Los Angeles Lakers and recently inducted to the Basketball Hall of Fame. So it is an honor to wear this today. I even have the socks and the Mamba shoes. So in honor of Kobe Bryant, or 
the mamba. I'm going to use my mamba mentality and try to see if this ball is going to bounce where I believe it will. And that will be in third place. Let's just give it a try. Oh, my goodness. Did you see that? The ball actually reached the top of the two in 24. I think that actually was better than what I predicted. So I would say my prediction here was wrong. The ball here was between the top two places. So I'm just gonna mark it here on the outside while I test some of the other balls. The ball that I will go to next will be the football. Remember how I entered and I caught the ball, kind of mossed it a little bit and celebrated in the end zone and the referee should have thrown a flag, but I got lucky. Well, I believe that this ball is going to bounce here the second highest. Let's just give it a try. I'm going to start from the same area that I started with that basketball. Okay. It came up near my waist level. So that actually was pretty good. But I don't know, and I really don't think that would come in second place. Based on that drop, I think it's going to come in third. And as you see, I put three, thinking third, when I should put two. Ha! There goes Mr. Miller being silly again. So now, hmm, what ball should I check out? I guess volleyball? How did you get over here? Well, just as easily as that ball dropped out of the chair, I think that if you can volley it, and you can serve it, you should be able to bounce it at a pretty reasonable level. But let's just see where it goes. I said it would go fourth, but let's see if my prediction was right or wrong. Ready? Oh my goodness! This ball went above my head! This is obviously gonna be the one that comes in first place, which would mean that my basketball would actually be the second highest on the board. Only two more balls. Let's test these final two predictions. And the number four ball that I have is the small ball. This is the one that I earlier predicted would go top. It would be the ball that would bounce the highest. Let's just see where it lands. Oh, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. That wasn't very high at all. It barely reached the top of my sock. Oh, I'm shocked. How could that be? I thought it was small enough to bounce. I thought it was full of air. I guess I was wrong. So I'm gonna mark that there. Finally, I have my golf ball. Let's test this prediction. I said it would come in last place. Let's just see if it does. I don't have any golf clubs around me. And I'm horrible at golf, as you can tell by that swing there. But let me see how high this golf ball bounces. Oh, man. That was even lower than the small ball. However, I think that was actually my most correct prediction. Let me put a five here. Circle that. With an understanding that one of my predictions was actually correct. One out of five. 20%, I'll take that in this science experiment, and I'll actually understand that the volleyball is the ball that bounced the highest. Today we tested our predictions, or at least the predictions I had, and the prediction I had for the ball that would bounce the highest was wrong. It actually ended up being this volleyball. So maybe, I think it's time I'll take up a new sport. Since, since this ball bounces the highest, why don't I go practice some volleyball? Thank you for spending time in my classroom. I'll see you next time. When I go to a baseball game, my favorite things are the snacks. Peanuts, Cracker Jacks, but my favorite are sunflower seeds. You know, I watch the baseball players. They put them in their mouth, chew them up, spit them out. It seems kind of messy. I like to eat my sunflower seeds three at a time. I wonder how many I have here. One, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So, if I take away three, I wonder how many that's going to leave me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Do you know what that's called? That's called subtraction. I've got seven left. You know, when I think about it, eating a sunflower seed is kind of like a sequence too. You have to open the bag, put it in your hand, crack the seed, chew the seed, and then spit it out. Hmm, look at that. There's another sequence. Seems kind of empty in here. I wonder where everyone's at. Well, I'm gonna enjoy my sunflower seeds and wait for the game to start. There are 3D shapes all around you. When you are outside or in your home, you can look around and find shapes. We're going to look at three 3D shapes today. The first one we're going to look at is a cylinder. Let's take a peek at this cylinder. When we look at a cylinder, it has a circle base on both sides and is curvy around. Do you see any sports equipment that is shaped like a cylinder? Now, these aren't cylinders, but the container for the tennis balls, it's a cylinder. We see that circle shape at the top and at the bottom, and it's a curved surface all around. What other cylinders do you see? A water bottle is a cylinder. It has a circle base and a circle top, and you can have a drink on a hot day. Do you know what this is for? I'll give you a clue. You can run and pass it along to your friend on a relay. It's a baton, like in track. It's shaped like a cylinder. It has a circle base on both ends. Even the air pump for airing up different balls can be shaped like a cylinder. Let's look at this next one. Do you recognize it? It looks a lot like an ice cream cone because it's a cone. It also has a circle base, but when you flip it around, it has a pointy tip. It's a cone. Do you see any cones that are used in sports? Yes, these are both cones, and they're usually called cones. You can use them for relays, you can run around or play a game. Maybe you have them that you could use. Now, this last one, I bet you recognize it. It is called a sphere. A sphere is like a circle, but instead of being flat, it's completely round. Sometimes you call it a ball. Can you say sphere? Great job. What spheres can you see? Hmm. I notice that the Frisbee is a circle, but it's flat, so it can't be a sphere. But the basketball is a sphere. That's why it rolls and you can bounce it. Do you see any other spheres? Sure, the bowling ball is a sphere. You can roll and hopefully get a strike. And a tennis ball, it's a sphere too. Hmm, I wonder what other shapes we might have. Do you think all balls are spheres? A football is called a ball, but it's not a sphere. This one's shaped like a circle, but 
It's flat too. Hmm, a hockey puck is a different shape. Which shape do you think a hockey puck would be? A cylinder, a cone, or a sphere? Hmm, it's round like a circle on both sides, but it's kind of flat. Did you say cylinder? Yes, a hockey puck, it's a cylinder. Great job. Shapes are all around you. I want you to look for shapes. You can find them anywhere you go. Whether you're going with your family, to the pool or to the park, you can find them in your home. I want you to be looking for shapes. See you next time, bye. I've had so much fun today and I can't wait to come back to the secret classroom next week. I think I'll go play with my sphere now. Catch you later. Hey, my name is Asante. School is cool, and one way to be a pro is with the secret classroom pro tip. Safety is very important. I always remember to buckle my seatbelt when I get into a car. I love to ride my bike and always wear my helmet when riding. Trucks, cars, and motorcycles are everywhere. So I make sure to look both ways before crossing the street and walk only on the crosswalk. This is Asante. Remember to stay safe. Bye, everyone. AISD's summer food program is now serving breakfast and lunch for kids all summer long. So pick up your grab and go meals Monday through Friday during lunchtime at these schools. Summer meals are available for kids ages one to 18, including children under five who are not enrolled in AISD. Parents, if you need to pick up food and your child is not with you, plan to provide proof of your child's age. Grab and go meals all summer long. It's that easy. Have you ever been to a baseball game? Yes. You like baseball? What's your favorite part about baseball? I what, don't know. What's your favorite part about going to the baseball games? When I get the snacks. Is that a basketball on there? Um, well. Behind the words? No. Oh, I like your hair. I know. It's a mohawk. It's a mohawk? Mm -hmm. Did you style it yourself? No, my mom did. That's cool. How do you do that? Um, j just by doing this. First you put water and then do this and then you put gel and then do it again. You think you look pretty cool? Yeah. But whenever I do a comb over, I look handsome. You dance? Mm -hmm. Can you dance? Yeah. Show me, hold on. Alright, show me some dance moves. You got any more? No. What's your team's name? Um, we didn't have a name. You didn't have a name? Yeah. Oh no. How do you know how do you know who to like cheer for? Um, we don't have nobody to cheer. Huh. Your parents don't even cheer for you? No. Well they cheer for us when we win. What if you lose? Well, they don't cheer for us. Um the ones that have those kids on those sides cheer for their kids. But the ones on our side cheer for us. Okay, parting thoughts? Mm-hmm. What? Nothing. All right, that's a cut.